Shalom, everyone. Praise Yah for uh, you all tonight. This is uh, Pastor Battle. We're doing our Bible study tonight. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, being born again, part two. Mm -hmm. um, before we get started, we're going to do the Shema. So you all want to join with us. We're going to be we're, tonight. We're on uh, Podbean, uh, iTunes, or Facebook Live, and YouTube. Um, so you join in just to the word and just uh, feel free to be a part. So we're going to do the Shema. And we're going to get started in our teaching. Shema Israel Yahuwah Eloheinu Shema Israel Yahuwah Eka Ebalu Shem Tevo Mahuto Ebalu Shem Leolam Bayer Shema Israel Yahuwah Eloheinu Shema Israel kindness. Yah, teach us your word and help us to grow in you and to live for you and to deny our own self-interest, Yah, and just humble ourselves before you. We just thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. So, tonight we're dealing with part two of uh, being born again. Uh, our scripture that we're going to be using is going to be John uh, chapter 3. and um, That's our foundation scripture. And also we're going to, uh, we're going to deal with Deuteronomy uh, 27, uh, summer 28, and 26, and also we're going to be dealing with uh, Jeremiah 31, <clears throat> 31, 31, beginning of verse 31, and Numbers 21, so we're going to be all over the Bible, so we can learn some things, amen, mm -hmm. so um, I'll start off reading, again, um, I'm starting my financial scripture, start reading from um, John 3 and 1, said, there was a man from the Pharisee named Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Judeans. This man came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know it is from God that you have come as a teacher, for no one can do these miracles you perform unless God is with him. Yes, indeed, Yeshua answered, I tell you that unless a person is born again from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time. So Yeshua answered, Yes, indeed. I tell you that unless a person is born from water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the, the kingdom of God. What is born from the flesh is flesh, and what is born from the Spirit is spirit. Stop being amazed at my telling you that you must be born again from above. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear its sound but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. That's how it is with everyone who has been born from the Spirit. So push pause. So now, we got Nicodemus. Now, Yeshua is, is, uh, is talking. Nicodemus comes to him by night. and says, we know that you are from, from God. You got to be from God. Because nobody can do what you're doing except that, that, that Yah is with them, right? So then Yeshua begins to talk to him and says, you know, well... You gotta be born again. Now Nicodemus is puzzled. Now Yeshua rebukes him. He tells him, he says, um, verse seven. He says, "Stop being amazed at my telling you that you must be born again from above." 
right? He tells them that. Now, now let me, let me, let me, at verse 9, Nicodemus says this. Well, how can this happen? Yeshua answered him, you hold the office of teacher in Israel, and you don't know this. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, I tell you that what we speak about, we know, and what we give evidence of, we have seen, but you people don't accept our evidence. Now, Yeshua rebukes Nicodemus. Why? Because Nicodemus being a teacher of a Pharisee, he should have a clear understanding of what Israel is. Him being a teacher, you understand the condition of our people. You understand. You understand that we came from the, from the diaspora. We're back here. Uh, everybody didn't come back. Only about five percent came back from, uh, from from Babylon from captivity. And then the northern kingdom, nobody came back. And all the ones that's left is a remnant. And now we're under oppression, you know, by Rome. So you should know our condition. So Yeshua says, well, you hold the office of a teacher, and you don't know this, that you must be born again. Mm. Now, now, what is Yeshua talking about? Mm. Because he's dealing, he, he's dealing with a, a very serious subject. When he speaks, he, he just doesn't just, just speak, just happenstance, just, just, just say things. Right. He has a reason why he's saying things. So what, when he, what he does is, he tells Nicodemus this. He says, well, uh, we're going to skip a little, down a little bit to verse 14. And this is what he says. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. And let's touch on that, because we got to deal with a few issues on this. First of all, being lifted up. When Yeshua says being lifted up, he must be lifted up. That has absolutely nothing to do with praise and worship. No. Your dancing, your shouting is not lifting up your shoe. That's not going to draw anybody to be born again. They're not going to get saved. They're not going to come into the kingdom of, of, of Yah because you can dance and shout and clap your hands. You know what? How that? No. That don't work. That's not what he's talking about. You know, because as a matter of fact, your praise don't mean anything to y'all if you're not walking in obedience. Mm. Mm. You got to be obedient. It has something to do with you shouting. It's your obedience. What did he tell um, uh, 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 King Saul when Samuel told Saul in, in, in 1 Samuel 15? Mm. You know, he made your sacrifice. He said, listen, man, your obedience is better than any sacrifice you can ever give. Yeah. So it's your obedience. So, so Yeshua is not talking about praise and worship. He's just talking about a dancing of the feet, a clapping of the hands, a talking in tongues, and loud singing. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. Now, before we go to Numbers, we'll turn you back to Numbers 21, and before we start talk about that, we're going to deal with the subject of eternal life. Numbers 21. Because we, we have to understand what Yeshua is talking about. Uh, one thing about the Most High is that, that he doesn't want anybody to be ignorant. You know, uh, the word says that he that, that um, he once winked out ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to turn, to repent, to turn from their sin. So now, so now especially in 2019, and ignorance is no longer an excuse. We have too much information going on for us to remain in the same situation that we was 20 years ago. You have no excuse. Most of the time we get offended and get upset and act a fool because we don't read. We don't study. So we respond to somebody out of our emotions and our opinion instead of having some facts on what we're talking about. Because Something that said we don't like, well, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm 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 gonna re rebuke that. It's just like the faith robbing phrase that the adversary has given us through some of these churches, where someone come tell you something you don't like. The first thing you say was, "I don't receive that." Well, the reality is, it don't matter what you receive or don't receive. If Yah is talking to you, His word is His word, whether you like it or not. And your your opinion about it or you receiving it is not gonna make His word null and void. His word gonna come to pass. So it ain't about you receiving. <laughs> you know, it's about you listening to what he says and being obedient. So now Yeshua, 
he says what? He said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so shall he be lifted up. So Yeshua is now teaching Nicodemus about being born again and what it takes. One perspective. So Numbers 21, verse 1 says this. Then the king of Arad, a Canaanite from Canaan, who lived in the gave, heard that Israel was approaching by the way of Atarim. So he attacked Israel and took some of them captive. Israel made a vow to Yah. If you would, if you would hand these people over to me, I would completely destroy their cities. Yah listened to what Israel said and handed over the Canaanim, so they completely destroyed them and their cities and named that place Hormah, which means complete, destru complete destruction. Now, then they traveled from Mount Hor on the road toward the Sea of Suf in order to go around the land of Edom. But the people's tempers grew short because of the detour. So the people spoke against Yah and against Moses. Why don't you bring us up out of Egypt? To die in the desert, there's no real food, there's no real water, there's no water, and we're sick of this miserable stuff we're eating. So let's let's go to um, we're gonna start, okay, push pause and, and, and we're gonna deal with the first issue in John uh, three when Yeshua says this in uh three three and set three and eight. He says the wind blows where it wants to, and you hear it sound. But you don't know where it's come, where it come, comes from, or where it's going. That's how it is with everyone being born from the Spirit. Mm. The Spirit leads you where it wants you to go. Wow! So you show right here, number twenty-one, beginning at verse four, says they travel from Mount Hor on the road toward the Sea of Suf in order to go around the land of Edom. But the people's <coughs> temper grew short. Because of the detour. So Yah is leading them another way. Now listen, he's being mindful of them. Why? Because they just came out of battle with, with King Arad of Canaan, right? They came out of, out, of, out of battle, so they may have been war to, uh, war, war tired. They destroyed the city. So now, so, so verse 4 says this, Then they traveled from Mount Hor, on the road toward the Red Sea, or the Sea of Suf, in order to go around the land of Edom. Why go around the land of Edom? Because first of all, the Edomites one, one day one, one, was not their friends. They weren't friendly. They just came out of war. So they, they're probably tired. So y'all so is taking them another way. He's leading them by his what? Spirit. What is what, what is y'all? He's a what? Spirit. He's a spirit. So he's leading them by his spirit. And so... Because he's leading them another way, a way they're not used to, a way they don't want to go, they begin to complain. And Yeshua is telling them that everyone who was born of the Spirit <clears throat> is led by Yah. He gives the example, the wind blows where it wants you and you hear the sound. But you don't know where, where, where it comes from or where it's going. And that is how it is with everyone who was born of the Spirit. So the first thing you got to be born of the Spirit was you got to be led by Yah. By His rule of mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. By His Holy Spirit. Amen. So now, let, 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 let's go on. They begin to complain against Yah. There's no real food. There is no water and we're sick of eating this miserable stuff. First of all, that's very offensive. Now, they're out of Egypt. The first question they asked is, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Why did you bring us What is Egypt? Egypt is a place of servitude, a place of bondage, a place of harsh trials. But Israel was being treated mean, so harsh, they cry out to Yah. And because they're being led by Yah's spirit, him looking out for them, they complain against him. Why did you bring us out of bondage? Why did you bring us out of servitude? So, so, so one thing that I get from this is him bring. So, if he's lead you by, by his spirit, why are you complaining mm -hmm. about being in sin or being in a place that's holding you back when you don't want to go Yah's way? Mm -hmm. 
So to be born again, you can't have that kind of mindset. The second thing they said is there is no real food. Now he's providing a man who or manna and quail every day. You're talking about millions of people and their livestock. He's feeding them every day. They say there's no real food. Quail? Now, I don't know about y'all. I know quail ain't chicken. But I can eat chicken every day. <laughs> I, I can eat barbecue, fry. I can, eat, I can get out some chicken. <laughs> then he says there's no water. Now, the Most High provides water to Israel from a rock. And I'm talking about millions of gallons of water daily. He's not only feeding them. He, he's giving their livestock water to drink. He's giving them water to drink. He's giving them water to bathe in. To wash their clothing in. He's providing that. And they complain against that. Then they say, they say, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they say, and, we, and we're sick of this miserable, ain't no real, ain't no real food. And we, we're sick of this miserable stuff we're eating. So now they begin to complain because they're being led by the spirit of Yah. They're tired of the food they're eating. There ain't no real food to them. And they don't have no water. So, uh, and then he asked, he asked, why did you bring us up in the desert? Why? And listen to this. So in response, in response, Yah sent poisonous snakes among the people. They bit the people, and many of Israel's people died. The people came to Moshe and said, We sin by speaking against Yah and against you. Pray to Yah that he rid us of, the, of these snakes. And Moshe prayed for the people, and Yah answered Moshe, Make a poisonous snake, put it on a pole, and when, any, and when anyone who has been when anyone who has, who has been bitten sees it, he will live. So Moshe made a bronze snake, put it on the pole, and if a snake had bitten someone, then when he looked toward the bronze snake, he stayed alive. So because of listen, what what what, what is faith? Because we need to, we gotta get a clear understanding. What what is trust? How, how, how do you gain trust? At least responses by to know. Hearing. By hearing. Yeah. So you gain trust by hearing. By hearing what? The so the only way you can ever have trust, ever have faith, is only through God's word. There's no other way, right? So now, when y'all begin to speak to you, to lead you, whether through your leader or by his spirit, and you complain against that, then that shows a lack of trust. And the word says that things done outside of faith is what? Sin. If you don't have faith, if you lack trust, you sin. How, should, how, how do the just live? We live by what? By faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his, the word of Yah. Yeshua says in Matthew 4, when, uh, when, when, um, when the adversary comes to tempt him, and he said, well, if you, are, if, if you are the son of Yah, because the adversary challenged the same word that Yah had given, when you read Matthew 3, and, 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 and when Yeshua is baptized by John, he comes up, the Ruach lands on him, and Yah speaks. This is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased. Well, then that's the word that he heard. So now, as he's in the, in the wilderness, and he, he's fasting 40 days and, and 40 nights, he's hungry, and the first thing that's tried is his faith. So the adversary comes to him and says, well, if you are the son of Yah, mm -hmm. turn these stones to bread. And what was his response? Mm -hmm. Man shall not, what? Mm -hmm. Live by bread alone, oh, <laughs> but by every word that proceeds mm -hmm. out of the mouth of Yah. So the first thing is, is that, is that to be born again, you have to obtain faith. So by y'all leading them and sending them to another way, and they complain, now you have snakes coming to coming in, biting them. Now y'all put them in a position to have faith or die. Because it, it, it wasn't the bronze serpent or the poison snake that had power. 
It was them to believe that word. You're going to either believe y'all by looking at the snake or you're going to die in your sin because you're complaining. So now what y'all did was put them in a position to believe him, trust in him, or to perish. Mm -hmm. So Yeshua says, and to, 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 just to back that up before we go any further, he says, beginning at verse 14, just as Moses, in John 3, lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So that everyone who what? Trust in him. He raised up, you gotta trust that he's the Mashiach. And if you trust in him, you may have eternal life. So what's eternal life? That's the thing. We to know y'all. We've been taught many years you're gonna die and go to heaven. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to spend eternity with y'all. That's not what I'm saying. But eternal life don't just mean dying and going to heaven. Right. Yeshua's purpose is to reconcile us back to the Father. Right. We're going to deal with something being born again in a second. But let's go to John 17. Excuse me. Because we got to see this. It, it, it's more than... More than shouting, more than jumping, doing the splits. Indeed. Come on. Indeed. And then, and then all of a sudden, when we done doing the praise and worship, and, and, and service is over, nobody got saved. We did your word, y'all. No, you didn't. You dash out and ran around and hit your head against the wall. Now I don't hear you get offended, but listen. Are you really obeying y'all? If you don't honor the Sabbath, are you obeying y'all? If you eat unclean foods, are you obeying y'all? If you do Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, Easter, are you obeying y'all? You don't do the feast. So it, it, it requires obedience. Anyway, John 17. Um, we're going to begin at verse 1. <clears throat> After Yeshua had said these things, he looked up toward heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all mankind. So that he might give eternal life to those whom you have given him. And eternal life is this. To know you. The one true God. And him whom you sent, Yeshua the Messiah. So eternal life is to know y'all. And not know you from the perspective of saying, well, my name is Kerry and, and, and you're y'all. But to know him in, as to have an intimate relationship with him. <coughs> the Hebrew word is yada. Y-A-D-D-A-H, which means to have an intimate relationship like Adam knew Eve. <coughs> like Kerry knows Karen. We have a Relationship. We have a covenant. We're one. We know each other. Not so. So Yeshua says in John three, so that everyone who trusts in Him may know Yah, may have eternal life. <clears throat> Verse sixteen says, "For Yah so loved the world that He gave His only and unique Son, so that everyone who does what trust in Him may have eternal life." Instead of being utterly destroyed. Now he's still talking in the context of Moses. Because you're going to either trust in Yah or be utterly destroyed by these what? These serpents. Because, it, that's the, because they were being led by the Spirit to go a different way. They begin to complain. Yah sends poor snakes to the camp, right? The snake's biting them. Moses met the snake, put it on the pole, they got to look up at it. You're going to either trust in what he said. Or you're going to die from that poison. And the poison is a result there, okay? And, and the poison is a result of uh, their disobedience. They're complaining. They're, 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 they're grumbling. Amen? So it says, they're okay. So it says that, um, that uh, for Yah did not send the sons of the world to judge the world, 
but rather that through him the world might be saved. Mm. That those who trust in him are not judged. Those who do not trust have been judged already in that they have not trusted in, in, in the one who is y'all's only and unique son. So now, they're judged already. What was going on? Because we still deal with the context of, of, of Moses and the serpent. What was going on because they didn't trust? They complained. They began, they, they were judged. Right. Now listen, because you got to see something. When they were bit by these poisonous serpents, what began, what happened to the ones who were bitten? They died. They died. What's the curse of the law? Death. What's the ways of sin? Death. So how do you gain death from, from, from the curse of the law? By doing what? Which which sin? Intentional. Intentional sin. Intentional sin is different than, than sin out of ignorance. Intentional, intentional sin is something you got to think about before you do. So when y'all begin to judge them and come to them and bring it to them, they knew better. They knew better. They complained and they knew better. Who, 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 who is he? He's the most high. He's the one that came and gave a covenant relationship. He split the Red Sea and you walked across on dry ground and then he drowned your enemies. You saw that. Mm -hmm. Right? He brought you out of Egypt to mighty miracles. In Exodus 19, on the first shot of war, what happened? He gave him 10 words. 18. I am Yah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. They knew who he was. He said, you shall not. You shall not. Everything he gave him, 10 words, what uh, all are intentional is something you got to think about. He identified himself and who he was. They understood who he was. Yet, with them having an understanding of who he was, begin to complain anyway of him leading them. And because of their disobedience, their lack of trust, poisons that they begin to be judged. So y'all had to, so so because Moses, the first mediator, interceded for them, y'all sent them deliverance. The very same thing that was binding them, they had to look at to be redeemed by it or destroyed by it. Now Yeshua is a stone that the builders rejected. Now you follow him, he'll break you. <laughs> He follow you, he grab you the powder. He can, he can break you, humble you down, mm -hmm. and make you into his, he can destroy you. Your, your decision. But the thing is, you trust in him, you believe in him, you have life. You know Yah. You are reconciled back to the Father. You don't trust in him, and you're already judged. You receive the, the, the reward. Amen? Amen? Now I know that seems kind of tough, but hey, there it is. Now listen, we're going to go with verse 19, then we're going to go to do the Roman. We're going to deal with the born again part. But John 3.19 says this. Now, now listen to this. He said they're going to be judged. So we got to read the word and listen to the word. Now, this is the judgment. That he just said, right? Mm -hmm. The light has come into the world. Now, when Yeshua is speaking about light, he, he, well, he's an Israelite. He's a Hebrew. So he's talking from a Hebrew perspective. So he's talking about the Hebrew word or, which is O-W-R. Let, let me explain to y'all what or is. Or is the first thing that God made. He, the first day y'all made light. Not the sun, not the moons and the stars. They made it on the fourth day. So the first day he made light is the Hebrew word or. That word means enlightenment, truthfulness, the knowledge of Yah. So Yeshua says, he says in John 3, he says, the truth, the knowledge of Yah, enlightenment has come into the world. But people love darkness. The word darkness from a Hebrew perspective is the Hebrew word hosek. 
hoshe, which means falsehood, which means lies, right? So he says that the light, the truth, and enlightenment has come to the world, but people love lies. They love falsehood. Mm. They love darkness. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm. Because their actions were wicked. And we got to listen to this because he's still talking in the context of Moses. Their actions were wicked. They complained. Why are you bring us out of Egypt? We were straight where we was at, man. Ain't no real food out here. Ain't no water. We do not like what we eat. <laughs> We're going to die him <coughs> down. And then what happened? Their ashes were wicked. For everyone who does evil hates the truth, hates the light, and avoids it. So that his actions won't be exposed. But everyone who does what is true comes to the light, comes to enlightenment, comes to Yah. So that all may see his actions are accomplished through Yah. So we got to know this. We have to really truly know this. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So Yeshua's telling Nicodemus, you got to trust in me. There must be now how now why would he say born again? That's a, that, that's another key thing we gotta deal with. Deuteronomy 24. I forgot that scripture. Deuteronomy 24, right there now. Deuteronomy 24. Begin at verse 1. Well, we're gonna we're gonna begin at verse 1, but, but we're gonna put our focal point, our focus on verse 4. Y'all ready? All right. Suppose a man marries a woman and consummates the marriage, but later finds her displeasing because he has found her offensive in some respect. He writes her a divorce document, gives it to her, and sends her away from his house. She leaves his house, goes and becomes another man's wife. But the second husband dislikes her and writes her a gift, a get gives it to her and sends her away from his house or the second husband whom she married dies. In such a case, her first husband who sent her away may not take her again mm -hmm. as his wife because she is now defiled. Mm -hmm. It would be detestable to Yah and you are not to bring about sin in the land Yah, your Elohim, is giving you as your inheritance. Mm -hmm. So now, a man marries a woman and divorces her, they can't be married. We're called the bride of who today? Yeah. The bride of Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. He's talking about the, the, the marriage covenant, right? Mm -hmm. He was married to Israel. Mm -hmm. He divorced Israel. Mm -hmm. He can't remarry Israel. Because if he does, he values his own word. So he has to make her new. Jeremiah 31. Y'all, when, when Israel crossed through the Red Sea, they walked in between the covenant. They walked the they walked in between the covenant. That was a marriage covenant. He sent them away. The northern kingdom went to exile to Assyria. Never came back. It was a small remnant state. Then the, the Syrians kind of took them. Then the Samaritans, who the, the uh, Judeans hated, they were, they were, they called them mixed breed. Cause they brought other folks in to mix in with them. Yeah, they didn't like them. Even though the Samaritans called themselves Israel, called Yaakov Jacob their father. <laughs> yeah, she said, "Our father Jacob took a from as well." That's what she said. Yes, she said, well, look here. You got the water I give you, and they'll thirst again. Okay, Jeremiah 31. <laughs> Listen to this. Here, the days are coming, says Yah, when I will make a new covenant or renewed covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
it will not be like the covenant I made with your fathers on the day I took them by their hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. Because they, for their part, violated my covenant, even though I, for my part, was a what? Husband to them. Husband. Yeah. <clears throat> he was a husband to them. Yeah. <clears throat> but they broke the covenant. The covenant was broken. What happened? See. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 26 then. He was a husband. Y'all cannot marry Israel. Y'all cannot marry Israel in the condition that they're in. Because they've been defiled. Idolatry. Not loving each other. You know, the same thing today, man. We so many murders going on. We need to wake up because we're in the same condition. Anyway, well, it's a Deuteronomy 26. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 26. We're going to start at verse 16. Because Yah, Yah is making them a, um, a covenant. Look what he said in, in Deuteronomy 26, verse 16. He says this. Today, Yah, your Elohim, orders you to obey these laws and rulings. Therefore, you are to observe and obey with all your heart and all your being. Mm. You are agreeing today that Yah is your Elohim and that you will follow his ways, observe his laws, his visvotes or commandments and rulings and do what he says. You are agreeing that coming into a covenant. He said, in turn, that, that's your part. Our part is to do what? Observe his, 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 his laws, his commands and rulings, right? right? And do what he says. In turn, y'all is agreeing today that you are his own unique treasure. As he promised you, you are to observe his misvotes or his commandments, and that he will raise you high above all the nations he has made. Mm. In praise, reputation, and glory, and that, as he said, you will be a holy people for Yah, your Elohim. Mm. Right? He says in 27.1, Then Moshe and all the leaders of Israel gave order to the people. They said, Observe and observe all the commandments I am giving you today. When you cross the Jordan to the land Yah, your Elohim has given you, you are to set up large stones, put plaster on them. After crossing over, write this Torah on them, every word, so you can enter the land Yah, your Elohim has given you, a land flowing with milk and honey. As Yah, the Elohim of your ancestors, promised you, when you cross the Jordan, you are to set up stones. Um, you are to set up these stones as I have ordered you today on Mount, Mount Eval and put plaster on them. There you are to erect an altar to Yah, your Elohim, an altar made of stones. You are not to use any iron tool on them, but to build the altar of Yah, your Elohim, of uncut stone. And you are to offer burnt offerings on it to Yahweh Elohim. Also, you are to sacrifice peace offerings. Eat there and be joyful in the presence of Yahweh Elohim. And you are to write on the stones all the words of this Torah clearly. Now, Yah says in, in Dura, I mean Jeremiah 31, He gave them a covenant. They, they violated it. They didn't keep their part. They... they did not put the word of the Torah on their heart. What is your heart? Your heart is your mind. They didn't put the word of Yah on their mind. They did not obey Yah's word. They disobeyed his word. Right? So now, we see what, what Deuteronomy 20, 20, um, 28 says. Let, let's, let, let's go to uh, 27. Let's go to 28. Deuteronomy 28. 
we're going to begin at verse 1. Then we're going to go to Exodus 19. But Deuteronomy 28, we're going to just, we're going to just read uh, verse 1 and uh, verse uh, uh, 2. It says, if you will listen closely, listen closely to what Yah, your Elohim, says. Observe and obey all his commandments, which I am giving you today. Yah, your Elohim, will raise you high above all the nations on the earth, and all the following blessings will be yours in abundance. If you would do what Yah, your Elohim, says. Right? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read something else before I... I'm going to read Exodus 19, then we're going to go to Revelation 19. Y'all ready? Exodus 19 says this. Verse, verse 6. No, excuse me, verse 5. Now, if you would pay careful attention, pay what? Pay careful attention. It's power when paying attention. Mm -hmm. If you would pay careful attention to what I say and keep my what? Covenant. Then you be my be my own treasure from among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. You will be a kingdom of Kohanim or a kingdom of priests for me. A nation set apart. Right? These are the words you are to speak to the people of Israel. Then another another before we go back to uh, before we go back to uh Jeremiah 31, go to Revelation 19. To show you that Yah is setting this thing up for his bride. He was once married to. He's gonna remarry. But they're gonna be new a new bride. They're gonna be new, they can have a new spirit. Mm -hmm. Ain't the same. Second Corinthians 5:17 says what? If anybody's in the machine, he's what? Mm -hmm. A new new creation. Mm -hmm. That's somebody that, that's somebody that's something new. A new creation is something you ain't never seen before. Mm -hmm. It's like coming from the uh horse and buggy to the Ford Model T. You mean you tell me that they're, they're gonna drive me? Now, I've been riding uh, Wilbur all my life. And this contraption, <laughs> these folks, Wilbur's only going to move me down there. When that man got in that car and went five miles down and blew his mind. What? I got a hit. Hell, how much is it called? $25? I got to get one. <laughs> it, it was new. Something i never seen before. <laughs> Revelation is 19. Begin at verse 6. Revelation is 19. Yeah, the Exodus, yeah, the Exodus. Exodus 19. And we're going to read Exodus 19 now. So we're going to begin at verse 16. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. And on his robe and on his thigh. Wait a minute, did I go to the wrong thing down? I showed it. Wrote the wrong thing down. Well, hold on, y'all. I got it. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Six through nine. Y'all forgive me. Y'all ready? Says this. Revelation 19, uh, six through nine. Then I heard the sound. I uh, Then I heard... The sound like the roar of a huge crowd, like the sound of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder saying, Hallelujah, Yahuwah, or Yahweh, God of heaven's armies, has begun his reign. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us give him the glory for the time has come for the what? Wedding of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, and has been given to her to wear. Fine linen means the righteous deeds of Yah's people. So now listen to that. So 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 he set us up for, for a wedding, right? In order to remarry the most high, you, you gotta be born again. He gonna make you born again. So now so back to Jeremiah 31. Now, now we're gonna go to verse 33, and some of y'all Bible some of y'all's Bible is verse 32. And complete Jews Bible is 33. It says, For this is the covenant 
I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Says Yah. I will put my Torah within them. Some say it's law. I will put my Torah within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their Elohim and they will be my people. No longer will any of them teach his fellow community or his brother mm. know Yah. Okay, that word know is what? Yah, I have a relationship. The word know is the same thing Yeshua is saying when he says eternal life. He said, know Yah, for all will do what? Know me. How are they going to know him? Through the Mashiach. He said in John 17, 3, glorify your name. I know what you said. Give them eternal life, right? Mm. Eternal life is what? To know you, the one whom you send, and who else? Mm -hmm. So, then he says, from the least of them to the greatest, because I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. He will forgive their wickedness. What happened when Moshe prayed? He, to those who looked up and trust, he forgave and healed them, right? Mm -hmm. To those who trust Yeshua, it comes to him. Through your trust, what does he do? And he make you whole. He make you into a new person. Okay, then, don't have to believe me. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter number 5. Because to be born again, you got to trust in Yeshua as the Messiah. Now listen, you got to give up your old ways. You can't continue to live the same way. Now, now y'all will help you change. But the one excuse, hallelujah, the one excuse you gotta, that you got to give up is to say, as an excuse for yourself, is, to, is that, that Yah knows my heart. No. He, he do know your heart. <laughs> but, but your heart is, okay, Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, the heart is more deceitful Yes. The anything against the more than the sick. Who can fathom it? Yes. I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I test, test the inner motivations. Right? To give to everyone what his actions and conduct deserves. So now, you saying y'all knows your heart as an excuse to live in sin, he going to judge you for the doing the wrong thing. Now listen, there's two kinds of sin. Sins out of ignorance. So y'all says when someone sins inadvertently by mistake, they are guilty. But it's grace on that. And when the sin is made known to them, give a sacrifice and they're forgiven. Why? Because they didn't know it was wrong. Hussein, loving kindness. But now when you continue to sin and you know it's wrong, when you go steal or you commit adultery or you don't do what's right, now you know it's wrong. It's called high-handed sin. Blasphemy. The word says in Hebrews, how should you escape if you continue to neglect so great a salvation? Or there no longer remains a sacrifice for you. Why? Because you're doing it on purpose. So you don't have to sin on purpose. Well, we all sin. Yeah, we do. But it don't mean you got to tell a lie. Before you lie, you think about it first. You make a decision before you do it. Now listen, if you lie and you know you did it wrong, you know you did it wrong. You got to deal with it. If you stole, then you know you shouldn't steal. You can't even say, well, you know, I was hungry. Now, I just stole. Because if you're hungry, you can also ask. <laughs> man, I'm hungry, man. Can you hear me, please? People will feed you. Before you commit adultery with a man or a woman, you think about that. Before you want to kill your brother, murder your brother, it comes into your mind. You have the ability to walk away from it. Before you want to eat the pork chop sandwich or, the, or, 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 or a sausage biscuit, you have the ability to walk away from it. You can, well, it was cheaper. Well, look here, I'll tell you what you do. Get you a honey bun, 99 cents, 50 cents now, until you let it, let it go ahead and you know, pull you over until, until you get some, somewhere else. But the, the, the thing is being obedient, walking in the ways of Yah. Amen? So 2 Corinthians... Uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna begin. Um, okay, we're gonna start this time at verse fourteen. Y'all ready? Then we're gonna get ready to end for the night. Fourteen. Second Corinthians five fourteen. 
Y'all ready? For the Messiah's love has hold of us because we are convinced that one man died on behalf of all mankind, which implies that mankind was already dead. Hallelujah. And that he died on behalf of all in order that those who live should, should not live any longer for themselves, mm. but for the one mm. on whom on who their behalf died and was raised. So from now on, we do not look at anyone from a worldly viewpoint. Mm. Even if we once regard the Messiah from a worldly viewpoint, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is united with the Messiah, he is a what? New creation. The old has passed away. Look, what has come is fresh and new, and it is all from Yah, who through the Messiah has reconciled us to, has reconciled, has what? Reconciled us to himself and has given us that work, of the work of that reconciliation, which is that Yah in the Messiah was reconciling mankind to himself, not counting the sins against them, and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of the Messiah. In effect, Yah is making his appeal through us. What we do is appeal on behalf of the Messiah. Be reconciled to Yah. Yah made this sinless man to be a sin offering on our behalf so that in union with him, we might fully share in Yah's righteousness. So that he made us new in the Mashiach. Mm. Being born again, you made new. You have to be made, you have to be made new in your trust with your trust to the Messiah to be reconciled to Yah. And when you are, you are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now we're going to get on part three about how you got to be dressed. Because one man went to the wedding and he was dressed wrong. And Yah said, friend, you know you was coming to a wedding? Get him out of here. So when you so 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 you gotta be dressed, you gotta be dressed right. Maybe in the arm of y'all in righteousness. But you gotta be dressed right. So now to be reconciled to be born again, you gotta trust in y'all. You gotta be willing to be led by the rule of Kako Yes, you know, you can't be like you can't be like our forefathers, you know, how they complain and grumble because they're not like the way they were going. I told I, I told God I ain't wanna go that way. Listen. Bad decision. Bad decision. What did that man say that, uh, when they found that girl? Um, uh, <laughs> I got it. Anyway, bad decision. Oh. Right. <laughs> because you going your own way causes destruction. You, 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 know, you know what the word says? That's so clear. The word says there is a way. There is a way that seems right to a man. Is the way that seems right to the man. But the end of it is what? Death. So if, if if the way that seems right to you in is death, that means your way is a sinful way. So you shouldn't go your own way. You go Yah's way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Yah, for your loving kindness and for being so good to us. We praise you. Hallelujah. For being our strength, for being our salvation. Help us, Yah, to walk in obedience. To understand by being born again. Yes. We want to be born again. We want to live right. We want to be in your purpose, y'all. And I ask you to lead us, to guide us. Help us to surrender our, our, our self to you. To, to, to deny our own self-interest. Your word said that the same mind that was in the Messiah be in you. And the mind that was in the Messiah was humility. Self-denial. Mm. And he said that if you want to follow me, mm. you must first say no to you. Mm. And pick up your excuses stake and follow me. Y'all help us to have that mindset. Say no to ourselves. Give up and surrender ourselves to you, y'all, and walk in your purpose. We know we can do these things through Yeshua HaMashiach. So we ask you to lead and guide us through him in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Shalom, everyone.